This is very important sayings of the Buddha. Even non-Buddhists also quote these sayings of the Buddha for various purposes, for articles and giving talks, for writing books. Such an excellent advice given by the Buddha. It recite like this. Nahi vere na virani. Samanti the kudachanam. Avere na cha samanti. Dhammo sanantano Nahi vere na virani Sammanti da kudajanam Avere na cha sammanti is Dhammo Sanantano. Meaning, hatred never sees true hatred in this world. Through love alone they cease. This is an eternal law. Is a Dhammo. This Dhamma, Sanantano, eternal. This Dhamma is eternal. That means there is nobody in this world who can change it. Meaning is very simple. Nahi. Nahi means no. Verena, by hatred. Verani, hatred. Sammantija, see, never end, never end, by hatred. Kudachana, never. Avere nacha, only by avere. Vera and avere, the a always gives the negative meaning. Avere means without hatred. He used the word love. Opposite word for hatred is love. Love alone. Avere nature sammanti see. By love, not by hatred. Esa dhammo, this dhamma, this principle, sanantano, eternal. So in this way you can catch the Pali words also and get a better meaning. The story. Why the Buddha had to recite this or to give this advice? A young man who had a young wife, I think only son in that family, had no children, although they were longing, waiting for a child. Finally, his wife advised him to marry another lady. So she had sympathy towards the husband because husband was very keen to have a baby. So she said, all right, why not you have another wife? Those days, this is very common in certain countries to keep two, three wives if there is no objection. So he agreed. After his second marriage, in the first wife, notice, the second wife is expected. And now the natural jealousy, it is natural, jealousy appears in her mind. If she gives birth to a baby, husband may pay more attention towards her in future. Now that's the main cause for that jealousy. So what she did, without her knowledge, she prepared some drug 
to abort. So unfortunately, he had abortion because of that medicine. But she never knew that. After few years, second time, when she was expecting, she did not tell anybody. She suspected something. For a few months, she did not tell anybody. Later, the first wife came to know. She is expecting again. Second time also, she prepared some medicine. But baby is grown inside the womb. So what happened? The baby and mother both died because of that drug. And then she knew, before her death, she knew the first wife has done something. She had hated. She died with that hatred in her mind. So what happened? The husband was very angry. When he came to know that the first wife has done something, and he beat her, and she also died. Now, both were born in the same house. One was born as a cat. The other one was born as a hen, chicken. So every time when this hen lay egg, the cat come and wallop. So this hen could not produce chicken because of this cat. But the hatred is still working in their mind. The mental attitude is like this. Although we cannot see their mentality or way of thinking, but they have their own hatred. Whether humans or animals make no difference, hatred or anger, jealousy, all are there. After they are dead, again, the hen was born as a deer, female deer in the jungle. And the cat was born as a tiger, tiger. So in the jungle, again, they had the same body. After they are dead, one was born as the fierce one, was born as Ogre, or female demon, or devil, ogre. And the other one was a normal human being, a woman. And that lady has given birth to a baby, and this ogre was following this lady to take away the baby. But this these demons or devils can transform. They can appear as human beings. Deva, a spirit, ghost, and these devils can transform, change their physical body and appear as somebody else. So, one day, this fierce one, female devil, ogre, met this baby with the mother, and she wanted to take away by force. So the mother also did not allow. They had a big battle. Both were fighting. Then people assembled there, advised them. Finally, they were advised to go to the Buddha. They told them that he can settle your dispute. Because both claim that this is my baby. The other one also said, no, this is my baby. This is the fight, cause of the fight. But people do not know actually who is the real mother. Finally, they went to the Buddha. Then reported. Real mother said, this is my baby, and she wanted to take away my baby. 
The other lady said, no, this is my baby. She was t- carrying my baby. That is why I wanted to take it. Uh, then the Buddha narrated this story. You do not know. You started this battle long ago. But still you continue this because of your hatred. But still you have that hatred in your mind. Ah, then, all right. We ask both of you to hold this baby. One lady holding the head, the other lady holding the leg. Now pull. The real mother doesn't want to pull harder, and the bluffing one pull very ah, Then people knew this is not the mother. The real mother cannot do that to hurt the baby. Ah, they realize this is the real mother. So hand it over. How the Buddha settled the problem? Not only by preaching, he knows so many techniques. <laughs> then he gave this advice. Nahi vere na verani sammanti da sudajana avere na cha sammanti esa dhammo sanantana. There is another incident. That happened, I think, in 1930. I can remember. I read this in a newspaper. In 1930, 35, I think. Hitler in Germany. On his birthday, many countries have sent birthday gifts. Japan has sent a Buddha image with the sayings of the Buddha. Nahi vere na verani sammanti the Buddha achana with English translation. So Hitler went around watching all the, the gifts that he received from various countries and he saw this Buddha image. He asked, what is this? Oh, this is the Buddha image. What is written there? Are they next play? Nahi vere neverani. Hated, never sees. By hatred, but by love. Oh, kindness. This is an eternal Dhamma, eternal law. Hitler said, I never believe that. I don't accept it. If anybody comes to beat me, if I come to know, I must beat him earlier before he come and beat me. Therefore, I don't accept this. If anybody hates me, I wall up him, not only hate him. Then what happened to him? He rejected the sayings of the Buddha and declared war against some other country. Finally, what happened to Hitler? What happened to Germany? He ruined himself and he ruined his own country. After destroying millions of human lives, destroying so many countries, towns and cities. And now we can understand who is right, whether the Hitler or the Buddha. So he wanted to go against this thing of the Buddha. So I read this in 1935 in a newspaper. Now, there are many things for us to learn. We have to think very seriously. Why human beings are so wicked, so cruel, so dangerous? Because of this. We have three main roots of all the evils that we maintain. One of these become the main cause. One is our craving, the other one is our hatred, the other one is our ignorance. These three things can create millions of other troubles and problems and worries and disturbances. Either craving or hatred or ignorance. 
when we observe and think what is happening in this world amongst the mankind or human being when you read the newspaper almost every day so many sad cases no good news at all in the newspaper murdering a stealing bluffing singling cheating and violence and bloodshed all over the world what is the main cause one of these either craving or selfishness if not anger or hatred if not ignorance or illusion when a person becomes a perfect holy harmless person that means he has no craving he has no hatred he has no ignorance and then he become a perfect human being we are not perfect by knowing our weaknesses we try to be good to become harmless to become honest to become kind by reducing a craving hatred and ignorance but we could manage to reduce maybe 10% or 25% or 50% by using our full effort learning thinking contemplating meditating considering very seriously so we could manage to to calm or to train our mind but circumstances around our craving our anger our ignorance uh, that is the problem circumstances mean when temptation arise we cannot tolerate then we use any kind of wicked or cruel or harmful method to satisfy our craving when temptation is rooted deeply rooted into our mind completely change our way of thinking our understanding if not irritation provocation make angry then we lose our controlling power in the mind we cannot control flare up like flame of fire can burn so many things because of that anger we lose sense of reasoning we do not think as gentlemen or religious people at that time we want to take revenge we want to hurt other feeling because of that but we never think by doing that we harm ourselves not only others the buddha has given two parables for that now if you want to be the person by taking a iron rod which is very hot burning iron rod you take this iron rod into your hand and beat another person you forget that you burn your hand also so
So when you develop this anger, this hatred towards others, first you harm yourself, your mind, your nervous system, your heart, your blood, and your tender glands, organs, then the whole body. Because of that anger. Another parable he has given. If you are going to insult another person because of your anger, by using vulgar or dirty words, you never think that you dirty yourself first. You want to take some dog dung into your hand and throw at others, but you forget that you dirty your own hand. So when you scold others by using dirty words, you pollute the purity of your mind. Before you throw out the dog dance or cow dance to others. These are simple examples, but we have to think very seriously. When you get angry, we have to train our mind. We cannot stop anger, but we can control. This anger we cannot stop until we attain second stage, not even the first stage of into sotapan, sakadagam, and then we stop completely. Before that, this anger or hatred or ill will or grudge, these forces remain. But by knowing the danger of it, by knowing the Dhamma, by considering deeply, we can control it. Without allowing this anger to harm others, we have seen very cultured people very understanding people, very religious people also get angry. But immediately they use their full effort to calm them down that anger without allowing to flare up this anger. But faith indicates the anger. Faith becomes red. Eyes become red, and body and sometimes shiver. It's a very strong force. Anger is a very strong energy. It can shake the whole body like this. You might have seen when man is angry how he shiver like this, and ready to attack others. Just like cobra, poisonous snake. They get angry for nothing, not like other animals. Just touch a little bit <laughs> for nothing. That is their need. Hatred is the biggest weapon that they have. So, by realizing this danger, knowing that we harm ourselves as well as others, why not we try to control this? By controlling this, we never lose anything. We can protect others, we can protect ourselves by controlling this thing. When you pour some acid into a metal cup or vessel, keep for one or two months, you can see how the acid inside this vessel eats this damage the cup. So the anger or hatred in our mind is exactly like acid. And this anger damage our mind, damage our brain cells. They make the organs of our body just like acid.
because when we are intoxicated with this anger, the gland produces the liquid, poisonous, becomes poisonous because of the hate. When the mind is changed, so many changes take place in our body, we do not know that. We never think that. In America, they have tested this by using a machine to keep the head like this. One person who is meditating to calm the mind. So when he was meditating, they used this and see how this indicates the meter. Another person who is very angry by provoking him, disturbing him, and use the same method, and they have see the difference, how this meter works, when that man is angry. So without religion, without depending on religion, we can understand. Today people have discovered this anger, can create a lot of damage to ourselves and to us. Now that is why the Buddha says, Nahi vere na vera. If we continue this, life after life, we harm others, we disturb others, we create more and more bad karma. Let us take the Buddha and Devadatta. Started long ago, during we don't know how many previous births. The enmity, Devadatta harbored in his mind. He continued, he maintained this up to the last birth of the Buddha. But enmity, his jealousy toward the Buddha is very great. Three times he tried to kill the Buddha, but no one can kill a Buddha. The Buddha must face naturally, so he escaped because of that. <clears throat> How he maintained this anger? How he had to suffer because of this anger? Supposing if anybody dies with this anger or hatred in his or her mind, it is very difficult for that person to become even a human being. Before they are dead, they apologize. Certain mistakes that they have done or some misunderstanding that some people have, because they want to die peacefully, without keeping back hatred or anger in their mind. They know very well, if they die with that anger in their mind, rebirth is very unfair. So we never lose anything by withdrawing it. We release a big burden from our mind. So don't continue enmity. You can say so and so, oh, they have done a lot of damages to us, insult us, accuse and blame that he is right. But why do we want to keep anger in our mind? What do we gain by keeping this anger in our mind? Nothing. We pollute our own mind. And we disturb the other person's mind also when he come to know, our enemy come to know that I am very angry with him. On the other hand, if we can reduce our anger, if we can show a smiling face towards our enemy, if we can talk to him gently, do you think that he can maintain that anger for a long time? Cannot. Then he also slowly, slowly, slowly reduce according to your attitude. If you show your sour face, ah, then he also increases. 
certain degree. So every time when you meet your enemy, both show their sour face, increase few more degrees of their anger. That's what. So the Buddha's advice is, first, you must radiate your mitta, your loving kindness towards you. Because we hate ourselves. Always we hate ourselves. Remember, hatred is hatred whether you created that for you or for another person. Makes no difference. You should not hate yourself. If you hate yourself, what will happen? Your sicknesses, your worries, your disturbances, everything. Because you pollute the mind. When you radiate metta, sympathy, kindness towards you, uh, then you give the chance for that body, that mind, that life to reduce so many disturbances. Then you gain some sort of confidence. Uh, then radiate your metta towards your enemy. That is the most difficult thing for you to do. People ask, how can we do that? If you can do that, you are great people, not ordinary people. If you want to be great people, you must radiate your kindness towards your enemy. Radiate your metta towards your enemy. The power of metta, the most energetic force, the normal mental energy, we divert with love. Then it will become very soothing energy. This energy we can radiate, we can transmit to anybody, to any object, any living thing, some changes take place. There are thousands of evidence, stories, incidents, how changes have taken place because of this radiation of mitta and loving kindness. And those who meditate to control or to train, to tame their mind, if they can, fix their mind only to that particular object. Then all the other objects disappear from the mind. Then easily that mental energy gets into jhana. Jhana means absorption. Absorption means Mind absorbs only that particular object, no any other object in that mind. Uh, that is called jhana. It is not a very strange thing. When people say we experience jhana, people say, ah, rubbish, they are talking rubbish. It is not rubbish. But the trouble is, when they stop this one, uh, again the rubbish comes and occupy the mind. <laughs> they cannot maintain. When they meditate, very easily they can get into jhana. Jhana means we train the mind to fix only towards one particular object, no any other thoughts or objects, internal or external. Then it is jhana. Then there are atomas, this year, that year, higher jhana. The more we develop and develop and develop, then we can maintain longer periods. <coughs> then this Jhanic force, mental force, power of metta, very easily we can radiate. For a person who is sick, who is suffering, who is in trouble, who is in fear, we can radiate this metta. You know that story, so powerful, a poor child. His father died when he was very young. 
his mother married another man. That man is very cruel. Every day he beat this poor boy because this is not his child. He could not tolerate this boy at all. Every day beating and beating and beating. Mother also cannot understand what to do. He wanted to get rid of this boy. What he did? He carried this boy by this time, at night time, to a cemetery in India. Even today, you go and see, they don't burn dead bodies at once. They may keep one or two days, hand over to the, the in charge and they go back. So they, there are so many dead bodies always around that area. He carried this poor boy into that cemetery at night time and tied this boy with another dead body at night time. This poor boy was shivering in that, what you call cemetery. People believe that devils also come, ghosts also come at night time, and not only ghosts, these uh, animals, they come to eat flesh, especially uh, fox, jackals, and some other animals. He was shivering. The Buddha was sitting in Jaiswana monastery, very far away. At once, he saw this poor child is shivering there in the cemetery. Immediately, the Buddha radiated, transmitted brightness with metta and loving kindness. Now this boy can see the Buddha through this light. He got confident, he was so happy, he was watching, he was watching and waiting. And then he asked Ananda or one of his disciples to go and bring this child. Saved him and ordained him. Now mother is going and searching this poor child. No one could find, give any information. Accidentally, he came to the temple also, asking. Then, you see, he said, this is your child. He is a monk now, we have ordained him. What happened? Yes, her mother also joined. <laughs> ah, this is the power of Mitta. Every morning, that is the first thing the Buddha does. Radiate his loving kindness or Mitta. He got psychic power to do that. Then he can see someone who needs his will. That is how he went to meet Angulimala, the murderer, Alavaka, the cannibal, and so many cases. Purposely he walks, he goes alone, even without anybody. One or two hundred miles. He walk and walk and for the sake of unfortunately. He used that Mahayana Buddhism always talk Maha Karuna and Maha Prajna. These two stronger energy in the Buddha. His great compassion, his great wisdom, his compassion and our compassion, when you compare, you can see the vast difference. That's why it was great compassion. In his compassion, there is no ulterior motive, there is no selfishness, there is nothing for him to gain in return. But in our kindness, in our sympathy, our compassion, in our subconscious mind, there is something. At least thank. That is why he complain. I have done so much for him, he did not even thank. Why do we need that thank? What for? <laughs> uh, this is the difference. The Buddha never expects anything in return. That is called great compassion. If we can do some service to others, 
without expecting anything in return. Uh, that is called real compassion. If they come and give us something for the service, we, people are not happy for that because they reduce their compassion. Just like giving something in return for the services. Some people don't like it. So, we have to train our mind. We get angry. Everybody, I also get angry. But I never keep that in my mind. Immediately I wash my mind. Therefore no one can get angry with me. I have no enemy. Buddha had so many enemies because people could not tolerate his greatness. And so many people are affected because of the Buddha. Those who are bluffing innocent people in the name of religion, those who have been practicing superstitious belief and tradition, the Buddha condemned all these things. He pointed out there is no religious value at all in those practices. But those who live on these practices lost their income. And then they become enemies. Same thing. Such things are happening even today. Why people want to kill great people? Politicians, those who serve the country, those who try to abolish vices or immoral practices, they go and kill. Because thousands and thousands of people are living on those immoral evil practices. They lose their income. So naturally, those who try to do more good deeds create more enemies. It is not they create, others become enemies. So but we should not give up our good work just because others criticize us or condemn us or hinder us or disturb us. We can continue our noble work in spite of all these disturbances. The elephants in the battlefield, when two parties are fighting, those days they had no guns, they used only arrows. He says, arrows affect me, disturb me from both sides, from this side and that side. But I never withdraw from the battlefield until I settle this problem. I never withdraw. Now this is the nature of great people. Although disturbances come from others, they never get fed up. They never stop their good work because they know the world is like this. People are like this. People always condemn, blame, accuse. When a person goes higher and higher and higher, it's like this. When a person climbs a top of a hill, at that time you can see only his bad side. When he is climbing higher and higher and higher, exactly in the same way. When a person goes higher and higher, his name, fame and services, many people start to attack and criticize and accuse and condemn because of that. If we keep quiet without doing anything, nobody to condemn us. There's a nice saying, when I am good, everybody forgets me. When I am bad, everybody remembers me. <laughs> that means blame and accuse and insult. When he does a lot of good work, nobody can say anything, just keep quiet. And this is the nature of human. Supposing, if I do a minor mistake, So immoral or wicked thing, today or tomorrow, either state times or male male front page, my name, 
I am doing a lot of good work almost every day, not even one word. And this is the nature. We must understand this thing. If we want to advertise ourselves, we must do bad things. So, there are many simple things for us to think unbiasedly. Then we know how to adjust our way of life. Then we never get fed up, never get frustration, never blame others. Go ahead with our noble work that gives happiness and we win the battle in the end. And others who have created disturbances withdraw. Later come and cooperate with us. That is the power of that determination, confidence, mixed up with metta. Loving kindness must be there. There were very notorious monks during the Buddha's time. Even the Buddha also could not control. Never listened to the advice. When he was about to pass away, Disciples discussed this matter with the Buddha. What to do with this man and this man and this man? They are troublemakers. When you are no more here, nobody to guide us, advise us, what to do? And then he said, all right. If they are not going to change their attitude, you can give them the highest punishment, capital punishment. What is the highest punishment in Buddhism? In Buddhism, there are no such thing as religious punishment. But there are certain methods to train and to tame their wicked minds. So what is the highest punishment? He advised all the other monks not to talk not to invite for any religious services. Just ignore him. But without anger, without hatred, uh, this is the highest punishment. After some time, that particular monk feel very funny. There are a few hundred monks Nobody wants to talk to him, nobody wants to invite him for anything. Now he is alone. And then start to think. Then slowly, slowly, slowly changes have taken place in the mind. Then came and apologized and withdrew. And that is the technique. It really works. But it must go without anger, without hatred or without enmity. That look like hostile attitude, but with good intention to train. At home, sometimes parents do not talk to their children. It doesn't mean that they hate them. To train them, a good lesson. That is the idea. So, these are very simple incidents which can create very big problems, violent and bloodshed also, because of minor things. But if we practice our loving kindness or compassion or metta, no chance for us to create disturbances. Those who have created enmity or misunderstanding later withdraw. Because they come to know that we have no ill will, we have no anger, we do not harm others, then there is no ground for them to maintain that enmity. That is the practical method. Try to treat. It's not so easy. Best thing is, when you get angry, don't talk. Because the word that come out from the mouth like bullet at that time. When we are angry. Very hurting, disturbing. 
so control. Then second thing, don't move your hand. Hold your hand like this. Then digest your energy. Swallow it. But not by force. Even modern psychology says if we try to control our anger or emotion by force, there will be some sort of side effect, physically or mentally. You cannot control this by force with understanding. Understanding is the weapon. That is why it is necessary for you to know, to learn this thing, the danger of it. Uh, that we call understand. You know this is dangerous. You know this is harmful. You know this is disgraceful. You know this can create violence, blood taste, lots of disturbances. So why should we allow all these evil forces to develop because of this minor incident? So why not I tolerate it? Why not I keep quiet? Of course, there are some people who keep quiet, they are real culprits, you know, who have done a lot of bad things. They, it doesn't mean that they tolerate, they have no other choice. Therefore, they keep quiet. Not in that way. With understanding. Every day, what you learn after listening or reading, think. Then try to have some changes in your life in your way of thinking, in your way of doing, in your way of talking. There must be some improvement. So, this thing of the Buddha is very, very important. I hope you can memorize this. You can tell others, Nahi vere na verani sammanti the kudachana By hatred, Hatred never come to an end, but increase. Avere nacha sammanti, only by developing our metta, our love, our compassion, our kindness, sammanti, desa dhammo sanantana. You can see the end of this and then this is an eternal dhamma. What is dhamma? Mr. Nehru, the former Prime Minister of India, in his book, Discovery of India, he says, Buddhism is Buddhism, Hinduism is Hinduism, Jainism is Jainism. Buddhism is not Hinduism, Hinduism is not Buddhism. It's a very good thing because everybody says Buddhism is nothing but Hinduism. The Prime Minister said, no, Buddhism is not Hinduism. Then he said, the dharma that existed in India, we can see in Hinduism, in Buddhism, in Jainism. Two different, three different names come into existence by considering the way how they try to explain, interpret this dharma, the existing dharma, Hindus explain in one way, the Buddhists explain in another way, Jainis explain in another way. But dharma is dharma. And those who have no religion also follow certain dharma. Dharma means principle, virtue, righteousness good quality, dharma. This dharma is not created by Buddha or God or anybody. The dharma exists. Dharma is common to everybody. The followers of every religion and those who have no religion. Take two examples. Kindness Compassion, sympathy, one principle of the dharma. If 
if the followers of all these religions practice this, can we see any difference? Can you see this is Hindu kindness, this is Buddhist kindness, this is Christian kindness, this is Muslim kindness? Kindness is kindness. Ah, that is universal dhamma. That is why here the Buddha says, e dhamma sanantana. This dhamma is eternal, common, universal. Take another. Honesty. We want to be honest. So when we practice this honesty, can we show any difference? Buddhist honesty, Christian honesty, Hindu honesty and nothing. It is honesty. All the other principles. These are the dhamma. The Buddha has given very rational, practical interpretation to this existing dharma and how this applicable, how to practice the way how we explain by giving parables and illustrations, examples, uh, then it becomes Buddhism. Otherwise, that is the existing dharma and no one can claim this as their dharma. This dharma is not belong to the Buddha, not belong to God, not belong to Buddhists or Hindus or Christians. This dharma exists in this universe. Ah, this is the meaning of dharma. So that is why the teachings of the Buddha always we introduce as dharma. 